Morning all. So, um, I just wanted to go over a euro dollar trade and it was a CPR trade. And I posted this, you know, in the group on the um, 29th of December. And, uh, you know, I, I guess many of you have seen how it's um, how it's played out. But this was, uh, I guess, more of a video for the newer traders um, in the group. And this is just, you know, one of, um, you know, a few um about four uh, CPR type of setups. This is really the kind of uh, the most basic one that you get, and um, you know this is really the only way. If I'm trading any you know intraday supply and demand zones, and the way that we draw you know daily supply and demand zones um, is different from the way I would draw um, uh, intraday supply and demand zones, and this is how I identify really the best intraday supply and demand zones and in this case the supply zone so um you know first things first we're always looking at trades in alignment with our fundamental bias right so from a euro dollar perspective i'm i'm more long on dollars than i am on the euro right so um and also as well we had actually come up to a really nice area on a daily time frame chart. You know, the euro has been, you know, I say rallying, but you know, it's um, it's pulled back quite a bit when you look out and zoom out on the, you know, in a chart over, you know, maybe a year, a year's uh, time frame. You can see it's kind of pulled back, you know, a bit. And so, you know, it's it's always about understanding the context. And in fact, let me just uh, go to a, a, a live chart, right? So if you go to like the daily time frame chart. Um, and you look at you know the past year's um, uh, price action. Um, you, you, all this is is really just a bit of a I guess a pullback, right? <clears throat> in terms of in terms of you know when you're looking at you know the move to you know to the downside, and then you're looking at a move to the upside. And so ultimately, location matters is what I'm trying to say. Location of intraday trades should really be um, uh, tried to look at. Uh, from a from a from a daily perspective so you know if you're getting the same type of setup that I'm about to you know describe a CPR um, you know somewhere down here it's not going to have as much weight as it does up here because you know this is where you know the value is right if you want to be if you want to be short on a currency pair then you're looking for a deeper pullback right so the, the, the deeper the pullback the better because price right does is not always representative of value right price is not equal value they're you know two different things so if you know we understood that you know price um or value at the moment although price has pulled back over the past you know two three months or so um uh value you know is is it's a potential bargain up here and so <clears throat> And so, you know, location, first of all, matters as to where you're taking these trades. Um, so zoom in again down to, um, you know, the uh, the actual setup. So once you get, you know, one of these types of setups, whether it's stop hunts, whether it's uh, different types of CPRs, CPR type zones, this is where you want to then look to, you know, trade these types of setups. So <clears throat> looking at this and breaking this down from a capture perspective, um, and what, you know, when we talk about supply and demand as well, one of the things that we, um, you know, traders don't really focus on or even know about really is understanding the supply and demand equation. Yeah. So you have to understand why there's, you know, all the market participants and why there's likely to be more demand <clears throat> than supply or more supply than demand at a certain area. It's not just good enough to just say, okay, well, you know, this is an area of supply because prices, you know, went down. That's not, you know, the, the that's again, that's a very simplistic way, you know, all these things like, you know, order blocks and things like that don't accurately describe as to, you know, really break down why <clears throat> prices went to the downside because there's many times <clears throat> where you might see prices you know go down you know then up for example creating a demand zone and then and then you know you might see prices drift down and then still continue to you know break it now no one obviously knows you know um you know every single zone that is going to work but in in terms of you know probabilities you really want to know you know the reasons why market participants are you know are going to be short and why there's going to be supply so the first and overarching 
um, reason why there's likely to be more supply than demand is basically from a value perspective, right? Smart money who understand and the banks, right? Will understand that they want to be buyers of the dollar, uh, or you know, we're assuming that they want to be buyers of the dollar if we've done our fundamental analysis correctly over the euro. Which to buy the dollar, they have to basically get short, they have to press sell in order to trade it, <clears throat> right? In order to trade the euro against the dollar, so they have to sell. So from a from a from a fundamental analysis perspective, that's you know, there's 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 those guys. There's going to be more sellers than buyers if they're right on our fundamental analysis. So that's you know. Tick number one as to the reasons why we should have more supply than demand. And then the next thing from a technical analysis perspective is understanding, um, you know, traders being caught in their positions because this helps us also understand um, the, uh, the supply and demand equation. Now, traders typically get caught, you know, at obvious levels of, you know, uh, support and resistance. Yeah. And this is basically one that is obvious you know and we knew that would have uh, that would have caught traders going long because traders right technical traders typically will you know there's only really a few types of traders there's breakout traders uh, level traders and retracement traders right that's it you can have loads of different strategies but there's only really those three types right three types of traders there's breakout traders level traders and uh um, retracement traders that's it if you're looking at pullbacks breakouts and level traders kind of trade the underside of each level so they will wait for a pullback if that level breaks they'll take pay, take down the side of that and then they'll just if that breaks they'll probably try and go long again so it's just they're just trading levels any which way now in this <clears throat> type of uh cpr this basically you know gets the, the uh, in seduces the breakout trader and the breakout trader is uh, a, a, a trader that trades obvious breakouts from obvious levels of support and resistance in this case being resistance if you look to the left as you know 99.999 percent of youtube traders technical traders are taught to do is look to the left to see if there's a level of resistance which it was right this level kind of came up came down and so that's an obvious rejection so of price and so this large candle right this large move would have caused traders to basically fomo right right how many times have you seen a large candle like this and wanted to chase price so it, you know it causes traders to fomo obviously we're looking for short trades right because we understand the over overriding uh, value perspective we're not tracing price we're just looking at this as you know um, actually more of a bargain why buy the euro sorry why buy the dollar down here when we can buy for a cheaper price you know up here but nobody knows really um, you know can say for certain whether prices will turn around so what we have to do as um, as traders as uh, traders of uh, capture pain relief uh, the capture pain relief strategy and this is just one of them is understand um, uh, that we need to sit on our hands right is is wait right wait waiting is important because if we understand that the market is a zero-sum game, right? Meaning for someone to uh, zero-sum G, right? Um, someone has to, someone for someone to win, someone else has to lose. What we're looking for is when traders who are, for example, breakout traders, level traders, and retracement traders make mistakes, and then we can take advantage of their mistakes by understanding as well the uh, supply and demand equation. So um, what we're doing is we're waiting, right? We're waiting for traders to go the opposite way to the way that we want to fundamentally and then what we're going to do is we are going to take advantage of that and so if you know the breakout traders I say if but they're definitely in a lot of them would be in, especially on a large candle like this they would FOMO in right chasing price going pretty much the wrong way or they could go the right way right because again nobody knows it could go to the heavens right this might not actually be a level of uh, value you know uh, for the dollar right but the fact that when we're waiting and we're not in this trade and we're not chasing price it doesn't really affect us whether prices you know go to the upside or not 
But what we're looking for is when traders who are going the wrong way, yeah, get caught in their positions and they don't make any money, right? So, or in fact, not even don't make any money, they, they are caught and actually in, um, in, in a lot of pain, right? So let me just uh, describe this one second. Let me just get the, uh, let me just clear actually, let me just uh, clear all of this. Da, 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 right, so breakout traders are now going long. Yeah, you'd have to agree that the majority of them are going long, if not all of them are going long on a breakout of this level. Uh, whoever trades, you know, the intraday time frame charts. And so they've just seen this move, you know, to the upside, continue going to the high side, and then they've seen a pullback, and then they've seen pretty much the same type of pattern, which may start to continue like that, and then go higher, right? That's what they're looking at. And so, and so with that, traders are, you know, trading the breakouts of that level, and then what we do see is um, a move that uh, where you get prices start to reverse. Now, when breakout traders get involved in these in these types of trades, they have to go long. They have to buy, right? So they have to buy, right? Now they're buying. You know, at the, probably the close of that candle with some sort of stop loss just underneath that area there. And by the way, to varying degrees, they might, you know, because and this is a 30 minute chart, but on maybe a, on, a, on a 15 minute chart, you know, you might have traders who have gone long somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here, right? On a five minute chart, you've got traders going long at various different, you know, um, uh, uh, prices, right? To the upside. You know, mainly with their stop losses, you know, somewhere around here. And so in and around this area is where you're going to find lots of uh, breakout traders who are looking to basically go long. And what happens is, is when price fails to do, you know, what they expect price to do and uh, prices start to reverse, um, a form of bias kicks in, which is, you know, as you know, loss aversion bias, right? Loss aversion bias is uh, basically a study um, which basically says that you know pain feels worse than gains feel good, meaning that you feel pain more intensely than you actually feel pleasure. And how that manifests itself in trading is by um, is is really the fact that the traders will have an inability to take a loss. Yeah meaning that if they don't want to take the loss because the pain feels bad from taking a loss, then they will tend to move or remove their stop losses, right? And how many of us have done that when prices have come going against us and we move our stop loss down a little bit more, 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 and then we find that instead of risking maybe 1% on a trade, now we're you know risking 3% on the trade, 4% on the trade, 5% on the trade, right? And so when you start to see uh, that uh, type of price action happen, right? And traders get caught going the wrong way. And, you know, some traders will, you know, actually just remove their stop loss altogether. They just won't even have a stop loss because they're thinking, oh, well, you know, um, I don't really want to get stopped out. And so what we see is a drop in price. And this is really the phase where they get captured yeah, they get captured in their position because they can't get out, right? They don't want to get out. They, you know, because of loss aversion bias, they're not able to get out psychologically. Yeah, they don't want to accept the loss. Some traders don't want to accept the loss because they, you know, they've had uh, maybe a bit of a losing streak and then they've decided that, you know, this is going to be the trade that's going to make them, you know, win it all back. And they basically put everything on, you know, this one trade. There's so many reasons as to why traders will, you know, take the trade and then not want to blow up their account. <clears throat> Sometimes they're forced to. All right. But um, the, the lower prices go against them. Yeah, is the more pain that they experience. So they might think to themselves, there's a little bit of relief there, but no, prices you know start to go lower, start to go lower, right? And you can start to see now the the, the pain uh, that they're experiencing as prices go forward because they're trapped up here and they don't want to accept the loss. Yeah, they do not want to accept the loss, and so again, the further prices go down these guys are really in a lot of pain, 
Yeah. Now they've had some chances to potentially get out. Yeah. Had some chances to, to potentially get out at a, at a maybe a, a deeper loss than what they expected, but they're probably thinking to themselves right now with a lot of pain going on, you know, seeing their account go from, you know, 1%, maybe down to 5%, 10%. You know, some traders might be down even 20%, 30%, 50%, 80% as prices are all the way down here because this represents, you know, potentially, uh, I say potentially, but it represents maybe about 100 and something pips. Maybe they only risked maybe about 10 pips and with maybe a 10%, um, you know, risk on that one trade, right? So <clears throat> to varying degrees, traders are pretty much caught. And you know, the longer that price doesn't, you know, return back to this area and the deeper prices pull back is the more pain that traders are going, you know, to be in. And so I'll just forward, you know, to the present. And so what we see, right, is when price actually comes back up to this area here, right, as I had, you know, basically um, shown on the 29th of December, right? Breakout traders get pain relief. So anyone who went long, yeah, who bought in this area, yeah, has to exit their trade. And to exit their trade, they're selling. And the reasons why they're going to exit their trade is because they want some relief. Most traders who have gone through this amount of pain, who've seen their unrealized, you know, profit and loss, um, you know, down maybe 50, 60, 70%, 20%, however much pain it was, is just, uh, they're, they're just praying that prices will come back so they can get out for their original loss. Yeah, there's not too many traders that will hold and try to, you know, make money after going through um, so much pain. You know, uh, logically, you're, you're not really going to do that. Um, you are just going to hope that prices do come back and then you're probably going to say, well, this trade definitely isn't going to work because it's gone down. Lower highs and lower lows have been made now, a new trend to the downside. Probably, you know, I'm going to now get out of this trade. And the next best trade, yeah, other than a winning trade is a break even trade or at least a small loss, especially when you consider, you know, you were down, you know, quite a lot, right? Um, as prices came down here. And so, Traders, right, we know this, you know, psychologically, because if you've been through this, you will know this. If you haven't been through this uh, and you're thinking that, you know, you won't go through this, just try it. You know, try it on a demo account. I wouldn't say try it on a real account, but just try it and see your psychology. It, You know, you will, more than likely, you will want to exit this trade, right? Especially when you've got, you know, real money on the line. And so... Um, from a from a break even or small loss perspective, if you if traders and break breakout traders buy here, yeah, from an from a supply and demand order equation, they have to exit, right? Exit here, and to exit, they have to press sell. So this adds to the sell equation, right? So not only do we have fundamental sells coming in from um, the uh, the institutions. You know, if, if we're right about the fundamentals and, you know, the, this level being uh, a bargain price, a potential bargain price because it was a bargain here. We know that for a fact because prices went to the downside and we understand, you know, that the dollar fundamentally um, should be a buy over the euro. But then we also have technically these traders who went long right here now exiting their trade, which adds to the supply equation. You also have traders who trade support and resistance <clears throat> coming into this area and traders who trade support and resistance this is going to be resistance here right you've got resistance in and around these areas and they're getting short around here as well right they've definitely been stop hunted here right but at the end of the day they will be getting short in and around here and you've also got profit taking yeah so traders who are who have bought down in this area here from that level of you know support support and then these guys support they want to get out somewhere and they're taking profit and if they buy here then they have to sell to exit as well right so new traders getting involved are selling to go short traders who bought down here taking profit they're selling here you know fundamental traders who want to buy the dollar and trade the dollar they're selling here so you've got an overwhelming um, 
you know, reason, overwhelming reasons as to why there's likely to be more sell orders than demand orders, right? And if that is the case, then what you should have is prices, you know, roll over at some point. Now, do we know whether prices will exactly roll over? Of course, nobody knows we're dealing with probabilities here. But when we understand, you know, part, part of, you know, trading, and I say part of it, but a big uh, um, understanding of trading is, um, is, is, is understanding the probabilistic nature and as to why you want to get involved in a trade and why there's likely to be more supply than demand in an area, right? So we've gone from a higher time frame, looking at value. We've looked at, you know, actually I haven't really looked at, you know, into the reasons why, you know, the dollar, I want to be a buyer of the dollar in this video, but you know, the dollar for me is better than the, uh, um, than, than the euro, it's a cheap exchange rate. And then we're looking at technically why there's likely to be some more supply than demand. And um, you can pretty much see, you know, this play out. And again, this was, um, you know, uh, um, I guess forecasted, not necessarily predicted, but forecasted, you know, ahead of time as this being a decent area to look for, you know, short trades. Today is now the 3rd of January. So we had plenty of time in the group to prepare ourselves. And I posted that obviously in the group. If you're not in the group and you're watching this probably on YouTube or something like that, then obviously you wouldn't have had the heads up. But this is, you know, the, the level that, you know, the, the, when really the, 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 I say the basic level, but this is really the, the, the level that you need to understand as to why, um, trade, you know, uh, uh why you want to select and how to select certain levels, understanding market participants in alignment with, you know, um, the fundamental analysis. And so, you know, we're seeing this drop, <clears throat> not to say that it's not going to, you know, going to drop even further. Again, nobody knows, right? No one knows how far it's going to drop. It could come back up here. Um, who knows? But we know, we definitely do know that this was, there was enough of a profitable trade, depending on obviously where you put your stop in, or, in order to get um, some profit out of this. Um, and depending on obviously your entry and stop losses, um, this is now a profitable trade for sure. Um, anyways, guys, uh, what's that? 22 minutes in. Hope you enjoyed the detailed analysis and um, take care. And uh, yeah, good start to the year if you've taken, if you are in this trade and you've taken that trade. And um, yeah, long may it continue. Take care and I'll see you all soon.